Please, also in the back, could you take a seat? Thank you. So it's a great pleasure to welcome our special guest speaker for the final keynote here today, Miss Monique Moreau. She has been working for Cisco for a while, and then she thought, oh, corporate world, that is probably too, too boring for me now. I have seen it. I want to I do some new projects, some, some agile startup projects. And she's, she's one of the, let's say, most active person in, in the whole area of um, identity on the blockchain that I've seen the last um, few months and, and years. Uh, even, and she was one of the speakers already one year ago at our Blockchain X workshop, and she did a great job there. And, and I spontaneously thought she could round up the whole discussion that we had the week and all the different um, technologies and the different ideas that we heard in in one speech in 30 minutes. There are not many people who could do that, <laughs> but probably money can. And um, I won't say more. I give you the stage and um, thank you. Thank, thank you, Thank you very much. I'm really, really excited to, to be here. I've heard some wonderful pitches today and um, the future is bright when I, when I look at you all. And I've heard, it, actually it's about 25 minutes between myself and uh, y finishing and you uh, knowing where you all stand in terms of the awards. You're all, it's cliche, but you're all winners. I'm gonna take you on a little different route than what you're used to. And uh, this is all this whole notion of identity and what we mean by sovereign identity and sets of identities. There are going to be some polarities that you'll hear about. That which is centralized, that which is given to you, and that which is decentralized. Some of which we've heard a bit with our uh, democracy uh, 2.0 uh, examples, etc. I was in Davos, and I can tell you in private conversations, this is an extremely hot topic, and what you are working on is extremely very, very, very important. So there will be polarities. I'm going to ask you a question in the middle of it. Are you in control? Everything is going to be about privacy, and everything is going to be about security. And that's something you need to think about. Once again, I'll repeat that, privacy and security. And when you think about the Internet of Things, ask yourself, are you in control? The other thing is to take you on a different route when we talk about what is sovereign identity. How many of you have an Estonian ID card? You have this one, right? PKI chip? Yes or no? Okay. But here's the thing, it gets into the notion of digital and sovereignty, sovereign identity. And the other part of which I'll talk about is there are 10 million people who are stateless who don't have identity. And then of course you can think about what happens with refugees, and then you can think about other things. So, and what's coming up? Is it blockchain? Really? Is it something else? And then you're gonna have homework, because you all have to pass a test before you find out what, what, which, who won. <laughs> So here's the thing. When you talk about the landscape of identity, ladies and gentlemen, it's a full landscape. It's a full landscape. And by the way, the source of that is one world identity. And don't think for one minute that this isn't, like I said before, a hot topic. A year ago, January, literally, um, this was very, very small. And so the implication here is that there are a lot of organizations working on identity. Richard, so Richard Branson's working on identity. Everybody's kind of working on identity. And so it's very, very fragmented. And you have to think about where are you going to be when you're in the identity space. So it's not just about identity. It's something even further. And I've heard a bit about those examples today in some of your pitches. When you're thinking about the Internet of Things, there's a lot of data that gets pulsated out there. Now remember one thing I've talked about, we're going to take you on a journey between what is private and what is, what, is, what is secure. So you've got a lot of data and lots and lots of lots of things are pulsating information. And there are some people who are saying, well, who cares, privacy is dead. Really? 
Really? Privacy is dead. And think about the companies who want that data. Oh, lots of interesting data is the currency. Samsung, all these companies want to know how you're using data. They're profiling you. You are, in essence, a product. And so this is very, very important because a lot of attributes and characteristics about your behavior is being sent out. That has every implication about you. And this is very important when we're talking about the Internet of Things, when we're talking about blockchain, and when we're talking about sets of identity. Now, quite recently, I was with a, a colleague of mine who said, gosh darn, you know, I have, they want my identity. They, if they want me as a profile, as a product, they should pay me. And these are types of things that are acting, uh, acting out here in the polarity between what is centralized, what is decentralized, what are you pulsating out in information, are you cognizant, and whether or not you think privacy is dead or not. And here's why, because that's what hap could happen here. It is the polarity that we see. And that is what people talk about. So much is going on. We talk about AI, we talk about machine learning, machine learning, we talk about deep neural networks, and we think about what is it that it's learning? It's learning about you. And it's learning about me. Something is learning, right? And we have to just be cognizant here of what we're doing. Now, let me take a pause. The reason why I pause here is that whatever you do in your teams, you have to think about what governance you're setting out and how you're establishing governance such that you're not talking about cognitive biases. This is a hot topic today. How many of you are members of IEEE, the engineers in the room, the computer scientists in the room? IEEE has a new uh, th uh, um, initiative called Ethics in Intelligent and Autonomous Systems. There are 12 committees, including legal. And so one of them is this whole notion about how are you setting governance in place? MIT is teaching this now. Um, a lot of institutions are starting to teach ethics in technology. That's an important note to play out here. Right? What is it you're doing? How is it that you're establishing your, your, your solution? And for what purpose? So it is a data economy. We are pulsating a lot of information. And when we get to the sovereignty discussion, there will be challenges for all of us, especially when we think about what does it mean for blockchain? And where are you all at in that world? Are you in the center of that world? Right? Are you in the center of that world? Is a question to ask. How many of you are familiar with GDPR? You better be, especially if you live in Europe, especially if you think you're going to do business in the EU, especially if you're thinking about something called the cloud, aggregating data, aggregating sets of identity. May 25th is a very important date. Because if you're not compliant, by the way, I spoke to about 2,500 software engineers in Vienna in September. They had stands there. The students had stands there about this, right? And here's the reason why. If you are not compliant by May 25th or at May 25th, 2018, it can be 4% of your total revenue at a minimum hit, at a minimum. As a, as, a, as a reprimand or a slap on the hand to you. And so companies like my ex company are trying to run to be compliant in this space. And the reason why I spend time here is because when you're talking about blockchain, it's pseudonymous at best, as it exists. There's some interesting things happening in the total and anonymous space, but pseudonymous at best. And so getting into that space and understanding it is really, really, really important. So centralized databases, really? You guys know about what happened here. Let's, let's take a walk through that. That's the polarity we talk about, centralized versus decentralized. So 800,000 Swisscom customers, including myself, was affected, right? That's a, de that's a centralized database. Now, what happened was it fell in, that database fell in the wrong hands of one of their ecosystem of suppliers. But still, something is awry here. And do not think for one minute, just because it's your phone number, just because it's your name and address, nothing matters. It matters. 
It matters big time. Anything that is centralized is apt to be, interestingly, a target. Now, when I was in WEF, we had really strong debates at a political level of what's centralized, what's decentralized, what does it mean to build a DAO? Um, do we, can we imagine governments? This is one, this is, Estonia is 1.0 at the moment in that space. And so it gets into the question that we have to ask ourselves, who do you trust? Who do you trust? And the biggest debate came, which is really where I'm going to take you, is who should be the owner of the keys? Who should be actually triggering the key exchange? Who should actually be pairing and wanting to share with whom they want to share, when they want to share? Long, long discussions about that. And so the question to ask yourself is, are you in control? Are you in control? Do we or can we imagine something in between, right? That which is centralized, that which is decentralized. And so I ask you at this moment in time, how many of you think you're in control? You know, and if this doesn't provoke any discussion, if there's one thing you have to remember, at the end of this talk, when you go and have an apero, ask yourself that question. Ask yourself, with what I build, how is it going to be used? It's really, really very, very important. And so I work a lot with people. How many of you worked with refugees? So you know, in a refugee camp, people spend about five to 10 years at, at the most, sometimes, unless they get sponsored. Think about what that means for them when they can't prove provenance of their certificates or the diplomas. And so when I look at self-sovereign identity attributes, I'm thinking there's something that says who I am. There's something that says here is a proof of what it is. And there's something that says there's an attestation. And that's really important to think about. Who are you? There's the claim. You know, how do you prove it? And what if there is a third party to prove, prove it? How does that look like? So what I want is control and privacy. And when I'm in a situation, God forbid one day something happens and you have a war in this country and all of a sudden you have to leave. And all of a sudden, this university, this beautiful institution is destroyed. How do you prove you ever got a degree here? How do you prove who you are? And the reason why I talk about this is, again, going back to these interesting discussions, I met a, a person who is a caretaker, is a nurse. She has a, she's a PhD. She heads the entire nursing organization, moved from Geneva back to New Zealand. We were in Davos together. And what she said was, interestingly enough, the caretaker to industry is missing 38 million people. But if you have people in these camps who don't and cannot prove who they are, there's a lot of depression that sets in because their skill sets are not being used. Now, that's an extreme because you're sitting nicely and comfortably here. But think about it. They didn't think that was going to happen to them. Right? They didn't. And the wonderful thing is technology is going to be one of our best friends in this space. So some of the things to think about is as I look at where we're, we're going, because I'm going to make sure you're all comfortable. Sovereign, how, how many of you have heard of Sovereign? New space here to, to look at. So think about Sovereign. This is another uh, group that's looking at um, you, know, you owning your identity. It's another space that's been out there. Lots of people are using Sovereign or trying to. And uh, the whole idea is that you are going to be responsible. You're going to see a common theme here about you. When, you. when I give you some of these examples that are in play, you can go to the Sovereign website. And you can see that the tenet here is that you are going to be responsible. You are responsible for the sets of identities. And I think that's very, very, very interesting. And that's, we see that more and more. People looking at examples like Sovereign. Another example is 
this whole notion of the promise of uh, blockchain. Is blockchain the promise? Now, we are here, and I want to say something very, very important. I think it's absolutely cool that you're given these big problems to solve, and you're given the training with Validity Lab. So kudos to Andre and his team. Really, kudos to you. Because there are a lot of people don't, that don't have that level of training. I was just talking to somebody in Texas, and they wish they had that level of training. But there's a lot of but this gets you into the thinking. There's no right or wrong answer here, ladies and gentlemen. It gets you into the thinking of what is proof of X to proof of Y to proof of Z. So, is it? Well, there's a group out of MIT that basically said, maybe it's not. Uh, maybe there's a combination between blockchain. The notion about centralization that we talked about and decentralization is really that polarity we talked about is kind of a problem. And so there is this, uh, this issue about scalability, and we talked, I just mentioned that s that blockchain at best is pseudonymous. And by the way, Satoshi Nakamoto in his paper never mentioned he, she, they, whoever Satoshi Nakamoto is, blockchain. Okay? So, so, so that becomes an interesting space here. So you sort of see a coalescence of, of two sets of technologies that are starting to merge into looking at what is possible. Yes, it's slow. Yes, it's expensive. Yes, people are looking at polynomial uh, number crunching. Yes, and yes, and yes. But um, what, is, what is the whole... Uh, or what is the, or prime number uh, prime number crunching by the way what is the notion here is that data sensitive data their thesis is that sensitive data should not be stored on the chain and data is also a hash by the way okay so 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 we have to think about now how do we solve that problem how do we how do we look at that that's what these people are looking at so enigma is one group Enigma.co, look them up. Sovereign and Enigma.co, interesting stuff that's happening. And they're working on it today. They're trying to create, this group is trying to create, out of MIT, a marketplace. They're trying to create this sort of marketplace for privacy. The professors were here, they were actually at Davos, and they actually launched their book at a UBS event, right at the end of January, here in Zurich. So, who is representing UBS in the room? Please raise your hand. There, Dr. Veronica Longa. So if you weren't at that event, you didn't get an autographed copy of that book. What they talked about is this notion, I think, is something to think about. Again, what, something to look at, you know, as you leave this room today, this notion of secure multi-party computation, or SMPC. So the whole idea is where how they, do, how they a actually uh, treat data, where data is split uh, between nodes. And basically what you have here, just this very, very, very small concept that I'm highlighting, is that you don't have any access to, no single party has access to it. And it's a very, very interesting piece of technology. I think it's uh, good to look at you know, post this event, if you haven't already. They talk about this coexistence between what's on-chain, off-chain, and this whole notion of privacy or privacy. And so the, you see that, uh, really, the world start to exist. They talk about also, I think what is very, very uh, compelling here is this notion of smart contracts to private contracts. So you can go and do your homework, smart to private, and then, of course, you look at storage and storage load. So this is really, really interesting stuff that's coming up. Because, as I said before, privacy and you owning it is going to be real, real, very, very important. Now, have you thought about the problem, please, of what happens when you cannot certify your diploma? There are self-verification mechanisms that exist today. So is A. Teha a member of that? Is A. Teha a member of the Open Initiative Blockchain Certificates? You can go to Block Certs. You can go look at Block Certs and start playing around with it. And 
look at what you want to do in GitHub, etc. It's a step forward. It's a step forward to thinking about how you get your degree. You actually think about that third-party organization, um, you know, certifying it, and it's certified forever if this university blows up one day, which I hope it doesn't. It's been living for a long time. But the thing of it is, is that the problem to think about is what happens thinking about what happens when an entity or industry or something that you depend upon no longer exists. No longer exists. And that, for me, is the promise of blockchain. Right? No longer... Think about the people in Puerto Rico, for God's sakes. You think their university is intact? I don't know. I don't know. What happens... I mean, we're talking about war, but what happens if there's... a, a, a a natural disaster, or whatever. These are the types of things that we, we need to look at as we think about the promise here. And so, with six minutes to go, before we have the smoke going out for the Pope, I have, think there's room for research, ladies and gentlemen. I really do. I think the research here is around looking at secure multi-party um, computation. I think that's an interesting space. I think it's an interesting space to, 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 to pursue. I think it's also interesting to look at what it means to have block cert mechanisms, you know, to, to certify your verification. By the way, universities are doing this today. I'm not being, I wasn't being facetious earlier. There are universities doing that, and I think MIT is one of them that's going on that route. Uh, University of Nicosia has been doing it since 2014. They started out with time-stamped mechanisms. Uh, where you can upload in you know, a form of a PDF file to say this, you know, PDF equals certificate, and you can actually have that have your uh, have your degree certified. And if you really, really like to get into the code level, you can go into GitHub and look at it. So that's the real interesting thing and promise for us. <coughs> look at the following references. The book that I referenced earlier is this one. This one was the one that was given out, which is the new solutions for cybersecurity. And it really walks you through all of the stuff that we were talking about. Security, privacy, things, blockchain, yes, blockchain, no. Some of the use cases that I think that are very interesting. Sovereign, Enigma, block certs. These are really, really interesting space. And the very last thing I will say I find it that it's very interesting that the chairman of BlackRock said people or organizations should be doing good with their, their companies. Now, I don't know if there's going to be some fun out there, a fund, but I think there's a lot of currency in doing good with this technology, which is what the things that you are looking at and the, the, the hard problems that we need to solve for. And I'm very humbled to be before you, and I wish you all good luck in your, in your career. And um, I'm going to look at the stuff that you've created, and I thank you very much. So. Stefan's busy. He's getting the awards, the medals. <laughs> sure. You can have one. I think you walked in. Why? First of all, thank you, Monique. You're welcome. For, for compressing a lot of very thought-provoking and also informative material into 30 minutes, which is an art in that space. So thank you for that. Um, questions? comments, stuff you want to discuss. And just to, to start off with an anecdote, half a year ago I did a blockchain advanced programming something seminar at the Tech, uh, TU Munich. And I was giving s different um, problems to work on. And one of them was think about solving a self-sovereign identity and people were going blank. And nobody was taking the, the challenge because they didn't understand. Yep. And I couldn't get it across. What's the difference between having a state-issued passport and producing your own identity? So that's only half a year ago. 
Well, interesting. so the one thing I wanted to say too, I, what wasn't said about me is that I'm also an associated researcher at Alexander von Humboldt um, Institute, Internet Institute and Society in Berlin. And what I like is there's this intersectionality, which is what we have here at the School of Computation, Social, well, ETH with computer scientists, electrical engineers, and social scientists, and et cetera. And we will be having a, um, a, a workshop in May on this whole notion of digital identity and democracy. And we'll have people like um, Danny Gasteiger, who's at Procevus.ch, you know, what, are we, what is that world going to look like? And imagining, uh, you know, could we think about, there's this whole, you don't want to think about what a global citizen is, but if your borders are always porous, what could that passage look like in terms of you sharing the identity real time uh, and having these nonces of truth actually verify who you are real time with, whom, with, their, with people you want to share with. So I think the things that we're thinking about are, are the institutions that we know viable institutions today? Or is there something that's new? And that's the work that you guys are doing with 4.0, finance 4.0, what's friction, what's frictionless, you know, what is the new flow of value, and, and so on and so forth. And these are very challenging questions because if you talk to politicians, they have a heart attack about this. They really do. They, they just, uh, oh my God, you know, you're poking a, you're poking a, you know, a whole, uh, they're, them in the eye. And it's sort of like, no, 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 this is the way the world is going to exist. Well, I will tell you this, Casper uh, Korges, I had a chance to meet him in Estonia. And um, he really had gotten in trouble because he wanted to tokenize the nation. Remember, he wanted to create S coins. And who slapped him very hard was the head of the European Central Bank. Um, so, and you know, you need to know that this whole notion of uh, digital identity in, in the way Estonia has been thinking about it, it was a group of, of some people have had it as a capstone project before it became real. And so these are, this is why I say the promises in this room with what you guys are doing. I mean, I'm really so excited. And the other thing that I love about what Estonia is doing is in case, if you know, they have been invaded, in case something does happen, their data, they have an off switch. Their data is held in embassies. So no, but no foreign uh, power that's an enemy would ever get a hold of it. So they know this. So it's up to us to learn from these types of, of learning. And that's why I call Estonia 1.0 <laughs> in this space. So let me ask again. Do you have trust? Right. What do you think about what they're doing? So one, two, three. Yeah. You. I don't know. I looked like this. Oh, I didn't know. So, so. whoops. <laughs> so, so. Well, I'm I mean, no, no, it's a great question because it's garbage in, garbage out, right? How do you, so the question is really around how do you assure that what you put in is, is not falsified and it is who you are. And that's, you know, there's, that's why we're toying with, you know, what, who, what does that attestation look like or can look like? How many of you have opened a wallet or digital wallet like with Coinbase? What do they ask? They ask for what? They ask for your passport, right? They ask for something that has a photograph of you. You know that. So, so, so there's going to be some level of know yourself or know you, some level of that. And in a, in a, in a, uh, if it's a refugee type of situation, uh, people are registered essentially at the United Nations Ho uh, High Commission of Refugees. However, here's the thing. That's a centralized database. These people are fleeing, in some cases, uh, despots. What would happen if you got that? Okay, what would happen if it was 1938 and it's Joseph Goebbels in Nazi Germany? So, so the point is, is and that's only so much you want to share. Do I want to share my DNA there? No. Heck no. Who would want to do that? Right? So those are the things, right? So it's a great question. It's something we have to think about.
the risk of more and more people? What are the tools you're seeing as things changing in place to prevent people having some of these bipolar identities, like uh, an identity is for the weekend with the body, which I don't understand. No, I know. That's a, oh. Now you're going to get me into another subject, <laughs> the weekend with the guys. I don't know in Thailand. Um, <laughs> so, uh, no, 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 but it's a true set. It's a, it's a great question because you have all kinds of identities. That's, that's the point. You have a private identity, you have a public identity, and that's true. It's what you want to hide and what you choose to share. That's really what it is. There are things we have to pay attention to, um, and this is just a call out. Your social media presence is already being mined uh, from a variety of reasons. How many of you are familiar with applymagicsauce.com? Yeah, so applymagicsauce.com is really about uh, uh, providing a whole presence about you in the social media, a psychometric. It's psych psychometrics. And by the way, you can, you can be profiled. It's Cambridge. You can be uh, um, profiled. And, and s by the way, you express yourself in social media. By the way, you express yourself in anything online. And the profile can go so far that um, it could say you are, what's your name, by the way? Vlad. Vlad. Vlad is not dependable, and it can go to your future, future uh, you know, uh, employer. So it's what you choose to share. I think that's the whole thing. And, um, you know, these are, these are, these are the, the, the things that we have to absolutely, you know, these online, this capability of profiling, et cetera, are very, very, very important to be cognizant of. So uh, I think that's, uh, that's a key. And, and the other thing is, with, uh, with, with the work that I'm doing, by the way, I'm in the IEEE committee. I'm in the mixed reality committee. How real can that be? Um, so uh, uh, on, uh, on, uh, on ethics, and we have a really, our committee, because by the way, you have lawyers and judges, because they look at precognitive, uh, uh, they look at precognitive uh, bias sentencing, if you will. It's a really interesting space. So let me go back to you. How many of you are gamers, right? We've got a lot of gamers here. I know you just admit it. <laughs> Esports, e that's a really cool space, by the way. So if, if I am in a world and my mind is, all, if I am software, this is the stuff we discuss, and you, Vlad, what's your name, please? I'm <laughs> Genevieve. Genevieve. You are disguised as her, as Genevieve, and go and you actually stab this guy. What's your name? Tune. Tune, right? And your name? Magnus. Magnus witnesses it. What are the implications to law there? How do you, how do you now report it? And it's nastier because you've just disguised yourself as Genevieve. And they think Genevieve committed the crime and killed Toon. These are the types of things we're talking about because we're now looking at a world in the gaming world where realities get so mixed that the behaviors can be, if we're not careful, mis miscreant. And so, um, it, but there's a lot of excitement too in that world. That's why I'm excited about the world I live in at, at this point in time. But yeah, right. lots of, be that'll be another class. No, I wasn't. I was actually invited there. Um, in a, there's a th whole think tank that I'm involved in. So WEF is like Burning Man. Um, once you've been there, you've been you know, sort of Burning Man. The, the real discussions took not in the Congress Hall. They took in really, really interesting uh, places, right? So I'm president co-founder of the Humanized Internet, and we've won a couple of awards. That, that got me there. Great. You bet. All right, so thanks again, Monique. You bet. Thank you. Um, as the committee is still busy, we are doing something that is not in the agenda, but you have been warned yesterday, and I see mo not mo mo most of you sort of complied. The ones who have not their t-shirts on, do that now. <laughs>